The chair will go to Mr. Palmer from Alabama for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, Secretary Granholm, I, I'm very encouraged by your support for next generation nuclear. I think it is our best uh, option, best opportunity for transitioning to a uh, emissions free. Well, it won't be emissions free because there's emissions involved in the construction. But there are a number of reasons why I think this is, is uh, the direction we ought to go. Uh, one, we can recycle spent fuel rods. France is doing that. Uh, they use a standard design on their nuclear reactors, which I think uh, helps reduce the cost of the reactors themselves, reduces maintenance costs. But they operate 24-7, uh, where with wind and solar, it's intermittent power. And, and I, I worked for two international engineering companies prior to running a think tank for 20-something years. And our, we cannot have the economic growth that we want to have. We cannot um, be able to support the emergence of economies in, in poor countries uh, with just trying to rely on, on uh, intermittent power. Uh, and as I was saying, what the, the nuclear facilities will do for us is 24-7 power generation, except when you shut them down for maintenance. Uh, their operational life cycle will be approximately 80 years which Lord knows where we'll be with, with technology in 80 years. But the other thing that I think we need to take note of is that you can site one next generation nuclear facility on 640 acres. You, you, it's about the same amount of space you'd use for a natural gas facility. But to generate the same amount of power from, from, from that nuclear facility from a, a turbine farm would require 77,000 acres. And I think you understand the, the problems we're running into with not in my backyard, with um, potentially and a, a very aggressive use of eminent domain, which I really don't think we want to go that direction. So my other concern is about this, and, and you can address this, is there really isn't a scenario where we're going to be net zero by 2050. Uh, it, the physics don't work, the economics don't work, and 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 the technology doesn't work. Now, it's not to say in the next 20 or so years that the technology won't improve, but there really isn't a, a, a way to get there. So it, it is encouraging to me to see uh, the emphasis on next generation nuclear, and particularly since we can recycle spent fuel rods. The director of the National Nuclear Laboratory was here the week before last, I think it was, Mr. Chairman, and I asked him if, if he'd done any calculations at to determine how long we could operate these uh, nuclear reactors using the fuel that's stored now, and he said 100 years. So we don't have to depend on anybody. Uh, the other thing that I want to address is my concern. I, I know my Democrat colleagues uh, are very dismissive of, of what we're trying to do with HR1. They're very dismissive of, of some of the issues that we've brought up about China. I do not believe the existential threat uh, to the world is climate change. I think it's China. And in that regard, I'm very concerned about how much we will be dependent on China uh, for our energy resources. And, and I've said this many, many times that the war in Ukraine did not create the energy crisis. It exposed it. It exposed the fact that we've spent a decade and a half neglecting our hydrocarbon carbon infrastructure, particularly natural gas. But, it, but it's also instructive that no nation should be dependent on an adversarial nation for anything as, as important to its economy and its national security as energy. So how would you respond to that? Well, I, I couldn't agree more that we should not be reliant upon countries whose values we don't share for our own energy resources. And that's why the importance of the Invest in America agenda, the Inflation Reduction Act, has caused all of these companies doing critical mineral processing, battery supply chain work to come to the United States to build up our supply chain here so that we are energy independent. I think we could probably all agree that it's important to build up our own supply chain so that we are energy but independent. My point is we don't need to, we don't have to do that for nuclear. Uh, we, I, I'm agreeing we, with you on nuclear. We've got a, a major problem with permitting. It will take years to get us where we need to be on the critical minerals. I'm not, I'm, I'm fine with renewables. But there, there are certain physics that come into play here. You cannot 
sustain the economy that we have, much less grow the economy that we need to grow with intermittent power. Europe is, is starting to wake up to this. So I think we need an all of the, truly an all of the above, but we, we should not cast aside our hydrocarbon uh, uh, resources in this mad dash, which I, I think is, is, is rather mad to think that, that we've got to do all this in such a short amount of time when we really don't. And Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Now, thank you for, for testifying and, and for you holding this hearing. Chairman's time has expired. Uh, we'll go to Ms. Blunt Rochester for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Secretary Granholm, for attending today.